Hello, Linda Lamp here. Thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text, and we've been recently reading chapter 24, The Goal of Specialness. Today we're going to read section seven, Salvation from Fear. And I think that's a long enough section that uh, it's three or four pages long. We'll stick to just that section today. Salvation from fear. Before your brother's holiness, the world is still and peace descends on it in gentleness and blessing so complete that not one trace of conflict still remains to haunt you in the darkness of night. He is your savior from the dreams of fear. He is the healing of your sense of sacrifice and fear that you have that you have. Uh, let me try that again. He is the healing of your sense of sacrifice and fear. And fear what you have will scatter with the wind. All right, I'm going to try it one more time. And what you don't know, what you don't realize is that I've started this, this uh, section. I think I'm on the eighth recording right now. Um, and I've read certain parts to a certain place and then something happens and uh, I have to start it over. I'm going to attribute all of that to Mercury being retrograde right now as I'm reading this um, on uh, June 13th, 2021. So in any case, let me try this sentence one more time. I haven't had such trouble with it the other times I read it this today. He is, he is the healing of your sense of sacrifice and fear that what you have will scatter with the wind and turn to dust. In him is your assurance, God is here and with you now. While he is what he is, you can be sure God is knowable and will be known to you, for he could never leave his own creation. And the sign that this is so lies in your brother, offered you that all your doubts about yourself may disappear before his holiness. See in him God's creation, for in him his father waits for your acknowledgement that he created you as part of him. It is rather interesting to me, I'm going to make a side note, I, I, I try not to do that till the end, but if you listen to the last reading I did, at the end, I talked about how when God appears to us, I'm beginning to suspect that he will always show up in the form of Jesus or Yeshua, whatever you call Christ. Uh, and it, it, this paragraph is reaffirming that for me. I don't know about for you. Without you there would be a lack in God, a heaven incomplete, a son without a father. There could be no universe and no reality, for what God wills is whole and part of him because his will is one. Nothing alive that is not part of him and nothing is but, nothing is but is alive in him. Your brother's holiness shows you that God is one with him and you that what he has is yours because you are not separate from him nor from his father. Nothing is lost to you in all the universe, nothing that God created. Has he failed to lay before you lovingly as yours forever? And no thought within his mind is absent from your own. It is his will you share his love for you and look upon yourself as lovingly as he conceived of you before the world began, and as he knows you still. God changes not his mind about his son with passing circumstance, which has no meaning in eternity where he abides and you with him. Your brother is as he created them, and it is that it is this that saves you from a world he has created not. Forget not that the healing of God's son is all the world is for. 
that is the only purpose the Holy Spirit sees in it, and thus only one has it, it has. Until you see the healing of sun as all you wish to be accomplished by the world, by time and all appearances, you will not know the Father nor yourself, for you will use the world for what it is not its purpose and will not escape its laws of violence and death. Yet it is given you to be beyond its laws in all respects, in every way and every circumstance, in all temptation, to perceive what is not there. And all belief God's son can suffer pain because he sees himself as he is not. <clears throat> I just have to make this side note, I'm sorry. The, the, the temptation to abandon reading this book is something that I fight every time I read aloud for you. The language is so convoluted and so twisted and so jumbled up. It, it is painful for me to be reading this to you, but it's an important exercise that I'm not going to abandon this project as frustrating as it may be. But I apologize, I can't get through the reading without making a comment. I hope you don't take it as complaining. I'm not complaining as such. I'm, I'm struggling with the experience. Let's put it that way. Look on your brother and behold in him the whole reversal of the laws that seem to rule the world. See in his freedom yours, for such it is. Let not his specialness obscure the truth in him, for not one law of death you bind him to will you escape, and not one sin you see in him but keeps you both in hell. Yet will his perfect special sinlessness, rather, will his yet will his perfect sinlessness release you both, for holiness is quite impartial with one judgment made for all it looks upon. And that is made of not of itself, but through the voice that speaks for God in everything that lives and shares his being. It is his sinlessness that eyes that see can look upon. It is his loveliness they see in everything. And it is he they look for everywhere and find no sight nor place, nor time, where he is not. Within your brother's holiness, the perfect frame for your salvation and the world's is set, the shining memory of him in whom your brother lives, and you along with him. Let not your eyes be blinded by the veil of specialness that hides the face of Christ from him and you as well. And let the fear of God no longer hold the vision you were meant to see from you. Your brother's body shows not Christ to you. He is set forth within his holiness. What I think this is really saying here is that when you understand what is truly happening here on earth in this three dimension that we're living in, you can look upon everything and everyone as divinity and Christ together. There isn't anything else here. And since you're here, you are that as well, right? You are divinity and you are Christ because you're here and that's all that is here. Choose then his body or his holiness as what you want to see and which you choose is yours to look upon. Yet will you choose in countless situations and through time that seems to have no end until the truth be your decision. For eternity is not regained by one more denial of Christ in him. And where is your salvation if he is not but a body? Where is your peace but in his holiness? And where is God himself but in that part of him he set forever in your brother's holiness that you might see the truth about yourself set forth at last 
in terms you recognized and understood. Your brother's holiness is sacrament and benediction unto you. His errors cannot withhold God's blessing from himself, nor you who see him truly. His mistakes can cause delay, which, is, which it is given you to take from him, that both may end a journey that has never begun and needs no end. What never was is not a part of you, yet you will think it is until you realize that it is not a part of him who stands beside you. He is the mirror of yourself, wherein you see the judgment you have laid on both of you. The Christ in you beholds his holiness. Your specialness looks on his body and beholds him not. To see him as what he is, that your deliverance may not be long, a senseless wandering without a purpose and without accomplishment of any kind, is all the other choice can offer you. Futility of function, not fulfilled, will haunt you while your brother lies asleep till what has been assigned to you is done and he is risen from the past. He who condemned himself and you as well is given you to save from condemnation along with you, and both shall see God's glory in his son, whom you mistook as flesh and bound to laws that have no power over him at all. Would you not gladly realize these laws are not for you? Then see him not as a prisoner to them. It cannot be what governs part of God holds not for all the rest. You place yourself under the laws you see as ruling him. Think then how great the love of God for you must be that he has given you a part of him to save from pain and give you happiness. And never doubt, but that your specialness will disappear before the will of God, who loves each part of him with equal love and care. The Christ in you can see your brother truly. Would you decide against the holiness he sees? Specialness is the function that you gave yourself. It stands for you alone as self-created, self-maintained, in need of nothing, and unjoined with anything beyond the body. In its eyes, you are a separate universe with all the power to hold itself complete within itself, with every entry shut against intrusion and every window barred against the light. Always attacked and always furious, with anger always fully justified, you have pursued this goal with vigilance you never thought to yield and effort you never thought to cease. And all this grim determination was for this. You wanted specialness to be the truth. Now you are merely ass that you pursue another goal with as far less vigilance, with little effort and little time, with the power of God maintaining it and promising it success. Yet of the two, it is this one you find more difficult, the sacrifice of self you understood, nor do you seem this cost too heavy, but a tiny willingness a nod to God, a greeting to the Christ in you. You find a burden, wearisome and tedious, too heavy to be borne. Yet to the dedication, to the truth as God established, it no sacrifice is asked, no strain called forth, and all the power of heaven and the might of truth itself is given to provide the means and guarantee the goal's accomplishment. You who believe it is easier to see your brother's body than his holiness, be sure you understand what made this judgment. Here is the voice of specialness heard clearly, judging against the Christ and setting forth for you the purpose that you can attain and what you cannot do. Forget not that this judgment must apply to what you do with it as your ally. And for what you do through Christ, it does not know. To him, this judgment makes no sense at all, for only what his father wills is possible. 
and there is no alternative for him to see. Out of his lack of conflict comes your peace, and from his purpose comes the means for effortless accomplishment and rest. Okay, well, this was uh, not the easiest uh, chapter to, or section to get through, was it? And, and what I'll say, I will just summarize this by saying that what we're really talking about here is that the essence of Christ, the person who lived the life that we talk about, is an entity of appearance and joins us on this mortal walk that we are having here on earth. And when you can recognize that you are the same, that you have everything that you believe that entity has, all the power, all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the capability. You have that same capacity. You are that same being. You look different. You've had a different life experience. But everything of Christ is in you and is here with you every day, should you choose to see him and, and acknowledge him. That's my best interpretation of this section. I hope that's helpful. If you'd like to talk about it or, or uh, have questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. 907-351-3003. You can text it. You can leave me a voicemail. You can message me through Love by Light on Facebook or through YouTube or SoundCloud. And uh, I'm here to support you as we work through this work. And thank you for being here today. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next installment of Chapter 24. That'll be wrapping up Chapter 24, and then we'll be moving on. <laughs>